Hey guys, and welcome back to Topic Tuesday. If you've been able to watch any of the previous episodes, then thank you so much for your support. It's so much appreciated. We are now on episode 17, and I'm so excited to be joined by Sasha, Hello. fellow Brummy, who has come to talk all about business, motherhood, parenting, co parenting. Um, and I'm so excited to be on the sofa with her. I feel very honored as Sasha's just alluded. She's like, I don't do this very often. So I feel so thankful that you're here and you come out your way to do this. And I know you guys are going to be really excited to hear this one too. So Sasha, do you want to introduce yourself? I'll try. Um, <laughs> So I guess my internet name, Sasha Elise. Um, I'm an influencer, a mom, a business owner. That's right. Um, that really about sums me up. Like yeah. that's that's me. Love that. And all those things you just touched on, we're going to mm-hmm. be touching on today. But first of all, let's give them a little bit of a background as to you so where were you born even though I've already said (laughs) but like your age background family give us a little bit of a taster into who you are as a person okay so I was actually I was actually born in Derby I mean a lot of people don't really know that so I was born in Derby came to Birmingham when I was about four Mm -hmm. um and then I moved to London when I was, how old was I? 22, 22 or 23, one of them. <laughs> um, I was there for like six years, five years, five, six years. I'm now 28. I'm now back in Birmingham. How's that? Um, are you loving it? Do you know what I am? Like, I was nervous because I always wanted to, like, escape from Birmingham. Like, I was just like, I hate it here. It's mm-hmm. so small. There's nothing mm-hmm. to do. Like, I just, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, it was just, like, I hated it. Like, any t- any chance that I had to, like, get out of Birmingham, I was out. Yeah. Um, But I think being a mom, like, kind of changed everything for me. Really? Yeah, like, I think when I moved to London, I was happy to leave Birmingham, but I missed my family and stuff. And I'd say my relationship with my family also got better, it got stronger. Um, And then having a child, it just kind of intensified that even more. Yeah. So yeah, last year I decided to move back just to be closer to um, friends and family. which is really important. Yeah, it's especially, really... Especially in motherhood, it's like... You need, you a village. need that village yeah, so bad. Yeah, you really do. Because you really first do. of all, you need the village to help you, but also it's that like emotional support and that yeah. blanket and just whenever you need them, when you're in a different city, it's not it's not easy. You know not what easy. I mean? And for me, it's the little things like just going for a cup of tea. Yeah. Just people popping around you know on the what? weekend. Like That's so interesting because I was I was speaking to someone the other day and they had moved to Dubai. Yeah. Um, because previously in the year I was like, I was like, I wanna get up, I wanna go to Dubai. And she was talking to me, she was like, Lucy, like, although it has its greats, like I miss just going into my local village yeah, with my mom and having a cup of tea. I and get those that. like meaningful moments yeah. that like we never think of and you lose so easily when you try and chase the next thing. And oh, I was like, 100%. that's so true. I feel like Dubai is one of those, cause I've had that thought, like it would never happen obviously, but I've had that thought, like the quality of life just seems so nice. Yeah. There's so much to do, but so lonely like and obviously you meet people everywhere you go like I had friends in London I'd met like great people yeah but it's just not the same as like somewhere that you consider home and London just just never felt truly like home but you had a good time I had a good time time. really good time yeah it is a really good time um but you were ready to come back I was ready to come back and I love that and I'm glad you're happy And sometimes we kind of re reignite that relationship with somewhere that you lost. And I think it's a lot to do with like life stages and ages and what you're seeking from that place. And Definitely. when you become a mom, you just need that. Like home. to be grounded. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's what it is. Yeah. And so what age did you have Nala? Nala is, I'm not going to introduce Nala. Actually. <laughs> you introduce, that's your pride and joy. Yeah. Here's Nala. So Nala is um, my daughter. She is, she's just incredible to be honest. But um, 
I had her when I was, well, I'm 28 now and she's going to be four. I think I had her when I was 24. 24? 24, I think. Pregnant, 23. Yeah. Had her at 24. Yeah. Yeah. That's, because now I know what it takes to be a mom. I would never have commented on this before, but now I know what it takes to be a mom. I'm like, that's, it's completely life-changing at that age. So life-changing. Literally, I've said to all of my friends, quote me if I'm wrong. (laughs) I said, like, wait until you're like 30. I say the same thing. Yeah, like, I just, honestly, the pressure to have kids young, I'm just like, I don't, I don't get it. When people meet Ziggy, they're like, oh, God, I'm so broody, I want to have one. And I literally say to them, I'm like, yeah, he's so cute and so much fun, but it's the most intense thing. And just just be patient with it because I didn't know how realize I didn't realize how intense it was yeah you and know. it was like the biggest reality check in my yeah, life yeah honestly like, that's for being so naive Lucy yeah I was like okay <laughs> cool but yeah. although it's the best thing in the world and you yeah change it. it's true and how was your pregnancy my pregnancy was do you know it wasn't that bad like I feel like I had quite an easy pregnancy I had the typical like month one to three the nausea Mm -hmm. you know the feeling ill kind of thing and then from like four to I'd say seven slash eight Mm -hmm. because you are 10 months pregnant technically aren't you um I'd say that was fine but then the last two months were just how like I was so heavy and so big yeah and it was just so uncomfortable was in lockdown, like it was just, oh, I was like wow. a couch potato. It <laughs> you was do just, feel like that, don't you? Yeah, it just. I think the patient run, patience runs out in the end. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm like bigger than, uh, like I'm ready to get you Yeah, right now. no, honestly. Was she, was she on time? She went over by 11 days. Okay. So that just Those infuriated me. <laughs> infuriated me even more because I was just like oh my god I'm so heavy like sleeping I don't know about you but I had to physically lift up my lift belly up. and turn when yeah. I was sleeping in bed yeah like I just couldn't and I asked someone that question the other day I was like you know when you used to sleep when you was pregnant did you have to like turn your belly with you they was like no and I was just like do you have a big big bump huge like in the end I was enormous like I don't understand how she got so big and was she born big was she big? She quick? was, yeah. She was chubby. She had rolls and everything. Oh, like it was. Uh, what my was body she, didn't. What was my vagina way? didn't? She was. My vagina didn't either, babe. <laughs> my goodness. It's honestly like the most intense thing. Did you feel it all in your butt? Yeah, I like did. a watermelon. Why no one turned that? Actual I was watermelon. Thinking, Where are you uh, no. out from? Because it feels like my asshole's ripping. Yeah, it was. Oh my God, it was awful. But yeah, no one does tell you that. The, no. the, and this is the thing, like, I think at the time when I had Nala, I was doing YouTube and I remember kind of like giving people updates and like the experience. And I was just like, why don't people talk about this stuff? Mm-hmm. Like, I felt I've never, or I don't know if it's because you're not a mum and you're not going for that. You're not looking for it. So Maybe. you're not finding it. Do you I know what I mean? No. But I was just like, this is like, honestly dreadful. And was your labour good? Did you have a, did you have a, I don't know if any labor's good. That's not the right word to use, is it? But um, I would say for me, I had a really terrible pregnancy, but a really, really? good labor. Really? And sometimes I think you get one or the other. I don't know any of my friends, because all my like my friends now start to have babies. Like yeah. every bad pregnancy, they've had an amazing labor, and every great pregnancy, the labor's gone down. Really? Now. So how long was your labor? Three days. Your labor was three days. Yeah, yeah. But what I mean is that I've, I got to push him out with like no pain relief and like it was just really great like I just had the best three time days though <laughs> I'm looking like so was you contracting for three days yeah <laughs> he was testing my patience what about oh you oh my god mine was 12 hours oh love and that. I thought that was bad like I was like I can't do this well anymore but I guess your contractions wouldn't have been like you wouldn't no, have they, been 12 centimeters no no they? when they started I went into hospital thinking I was like six centimeters they were like you one centimeter I was like <gasps> I was like, you're joking. So you was they literally dilating. For, you had to go home. And then it went back and I was only two centimetres. I was like, I've been contracting for 10 hours. Oh. I went zero to 100, basically. Oh my God. So you've got a 12 hour labour. That's lovely. What a hours, dream. And yeah. she came out naturally. Yeah, she came out naturally. But I'd say by the time, it was too late at this point. But I remember, because so I had like a, a pool birth at home. Oh, did you have a home birth? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah crazy I don't think I'll do that again oh. <laughs> but I remember I got to a certain point I was like to the midwife like 
is it too late to go to the hospital? Like, I, <laughs> I need an epidural. Like, this is too much. It was like, no, you're fine. You're doing amazing. You can do this. Just like, you know, trying to encourage me. But I was just like, what have I done? That pain. It's painful. And you didn't have pain relief either. No. <gasps> this is going to sound really weird. Three days. And every mother and woman is, I quite enjoyed the feeling. No. It's weird. You're yeah. Sick. I quite <laughs> liked the, I liked the pain. Because I could understand what my body was doing and I was in such a flow that like when the pain was happening, I knew what was happening and I just had my mind in the game. I'm so weird. Was you, was you practicing hypnobirthing or yeah. anything? Okay. I was proper in like my hypnobirthing. Hip, so. Yeah. I the tried. Their eyes at me. Yeah. And no, you know, I really tried because I thought I'm going to have a home birth. Let me, you know, get, in get into that. I even brought a course and everything. Like, yeah was having like one-to-ones with this woman as soon as those contractions came. It, the oh, it went out the window. I like, mean, I still like mood like a cow. I wasn't quiet, yeah. but like I understood what was happening. And because I understood what was happening, I was cool with the pain. Cause I was like, I know what's going on. Yeah, like, you know that that I'm about to bring my child into this world. Yeah. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, but no. Like- I, I'm a weirdo though. Like I slightly enjoyed it. I felt like superwoman, like- oh, did you I feel like that. Superwoman? No. 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 Oh. I felt like I was going to die. die. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. all. I also had those feelings as well, but I try not to think about them. <laughs> that's amazing though. I love that. I and love so that. Nala came into this world and I'm sure your life changed. Pre-Nala, was it a very kind of fast life, I can imagine? Lots of... It was just... Do you know what? Can... Fast life. I wouldn't even say fast life. I've always been like a homebody. So like yeah. I just, I love being at home. I love spending time at home. It's just like always been my favorite thing to do. However, it was a very free life. Like yes. so much freedom. Just yeah. get up and go and do whatever you, you want when you want. Anything. Yeah. Um, And I just, that kind of just changed within like the blink of an eye. Because Did you that, feel like uh, that was the biggest change when you had a baby? Do you know what? You... <laughs> Yes and no, because of COVID, you were kind of restricted with what mm -hmm. you could do anyway. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that kind of helped in a way mm -hmm. because you're forced into the house and then you have a baby with you and you can't do anything. But I felt like that made me feel okay because I didn't have FOMO because mm -hmm. nobody was doing anything mm -hmm. anyway. Everyone was all in the house. I was in the house. So I was just like, okay, this is okay. Like I haven't missed out on anything. It's probably been the best time to have a kid, but I mean, looking back, it probably wasn't the best time to have a kid as well. Because I think a, I think it was a difficult time for a lot of moms. I'd probably say the most yeah. difficult time. Like you're literally, well, for me anyway, I was, there was just like really no social interaction apart from on your phone. Mm -hmm. There was just no yeah. social interaction at Human all. Human touch, yeah. Yeah, it was just such a weird time. Um, but yeah, it was. And how did you... Because Nala's, did you say Nala's four? She's going to be four in June. Wow. I feel like that has flow. It has really flow. It does though. Time does it, fly. It does. They're like a proper, kids just really show you like how quick time goes. And don't you think they teach you like every day to like make the most of it how you can? Yeah. Like Ziggy's taught me to get out every day because yeah. he's an outdoors boy. And like yeah. this kid will not chill indoors he's so so and it just reminds me to just go out every day and mm -hmm. just do life like whatever it looks like just get out and go yeah and i think that's what really he has brought out of me what that. would you say are like the highs of what being a mom has brought out of you and what would you say the lows are because i know there are so many lows yeah of being a mom and it's not normalized and people don't talk about it because it's seen as maybe a fail mm. or you don't appreciate it, but I think it's really important that we're really about, real about it. So anyone else watching this can take comfort and peace from it. Mm -hmm. So what would you say like your highs and lows have been from having Nala and experiencing what being a mom actually takes? I would say some of my highs are probably um, definitely more recently as she's gotten older, a high is that like I'm in a place where I really enjoy like just being a mom, like being a parent. And I can't say that was necessarily the case when she was a little bit younger. Like I remember having a conversation and just being like, I don't think I actually like being a mom per se, like the pressure that it has mm -hmm. and everything that it involves. It was just a very, and again, being alone in London, it just felt like 
the world was so heavy. Almost yeah. like it was caving in, do you yeah. know what I mean? And um, we both used to get really ill. Like I was ill every two weeks. Like it was a really crazy. Was there a reason for that? I mean, I have absolutely no idea okay. as to why that was happening. Okay. When I went to the doctors, they just said, um, she goes to nursery, they pick up things and it's normal. But I had friends that had kids in nursery and they're like, no, I never get ill. Like, mm-hmm. I, So I think I just had a really bad immune system. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was hard because it's just like, you're having to deal with like this growing toddler that has all these demands, but yeah. I'm ill every two weeks and it was just it was a lot like it was just you know that was really hard um however to make it more positive now um I mean I definitely don't get ill as much well that's good um yeah thank god do you know I I, I turned like temporarily vegan or plant-based yeah and cut everything out and ever since doing that I've just I've never got ill as much yeah like yeah well I'm not now no no no. oh you're not now (laughs) okay it was it was was like a a stage where I've got everything like no (laughs) she's not vegan no it was just a step it was a couple of months it lasted probably like five months um but during that five months I just never got ill I started taking fitness um serious again um and just all that kind of helps. And I feel like it just helped my immune system kind of just like shape back up mm-hmm. to where it needs to be. Um, but yeah, now um, it's helped me to be really intentional about like everything that I do, right. which I really love because I think before I wasn't a very intentional person. That's I, would what, just... I think you've just hit the nail on my head. Yeah. That's what I, said. That's what I think I just tried to say when I was like, yeah, I get out every day. <laughs> That's what I meant. Like yeah. you do everything with intent. intent everything yeah. you do has like, purpose behind it mm-hmm. i think that's the best word to use yeah definitely and that's just a great feeling because it's just like not only just with like nala when i'm spending time with her but it's just like with everything like mm-hmm. i really do try and just show up and be like you know the best oh. version of me so that i can be a great version for her mm-hmm. um and that's definitely one of the good things that is brought out of me um but that's definitely like a more recent thing. Like that, I, I, that wasn't always the case. Yeah, was that always I can the case? definitely relate. Yeah, and you feel bad when you have those like thoughts of like, oh, I just don't know if I can do this. Yeah. Because then, for example, me personally, I, I'll speak to friends who are like really struggling to get pregnant, and I'm like, I feel yeah. like the worst person in the world awful. now. But it doesn't mean that your truth isn't valid. Like, 100%. and your struggles aren't real. You know. Um, but I definitely feel like people said to me like oh, you know, it gets harder as they get older. I'm like, no, for me, it gets easier. <laughs> it gets like, easier. That first year of Ziggy's life, I don't know how I got through it. So hard. I just don't know how I'm, sub- don't oh, actually God. know how I'm sat here with you. I agree. But now I'm, it's so much fun. I'm yeah. Like, to everybody who says it gets harder, I don't think it gets harder. Yeah. So I think it gets better. It gets more fun. Yeah. Ziggy can communicate with me. Yeah. We do things more on like, you know, yeah. I just think it's so much more like, enjoyable I have to use that word which I hate using but I feel like it's the truth I agree and I I do feel like as well like for me I definitely it was never 100% confirmed but I think I went through postpartum depression and um that obviously doesn't help when you have a newborn so um coming out of that um did you get therapy I did go to therapy and it was my therapist that was like, I mean, it was never like, she can't diagnose me if she thinks I've came out of something, but she was like, just from hearing the things that you're saying, um, it sounds like you had postpartum depression, but you're on the other side of it now. So you want to talk about it? You called? Sure. Yeah. So when you were going through it, what emotions like were you feeling? Um, so my emotions weren't necessarily like towards Nala. Like it was never like, I don't know, some parents they can feel emotions like I'm not feeling attached to my child Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I love them Mm -hmm. like it was never that like I always felt like an overwhelming amount of like love and just like uh, like just so happy but I think it was more so um like losing myself and just not knowing who I was and like it just bringing I don't know it kind of made me like just look at myself and perhaps not be the happiest with myself basically Mm -hmm. um and that just kind of made the whole 
process I'd say of her from like I'd say zero to like two mm-hmm. it just made that process really difficult oh wow so it was a long time then you think you felt for like two yeah. years wow. yeah oh they say it takes two years to recover from a baby as a woman oh, yeah, but they to do. have to be in that I call it a pit I sound so negative right now but no, I it just, is a pit. I just felt like I was in a pit and I couldn't get out and yeah. every day was cloudy yeah every day was so cloudy yeah I didn't know left from right and it was such it's such a struggle when I think before you become a mom, you're so sure. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is yes. this? <laughs> it's such a struggle. But two it years, it, that's really difficult. And yeah. well done for coming out the other side. No, yeah. But the weird thing is, I didn't realise at the time when I was going through it. It was only like looking back, like in retrospect, really? I was kind of like, whoa, whoa, like who was that person? Something was wrong there. Like, yeah. it was just very like, I, I don't even recognise that mm-hmm. like who I was do you know what I mean and the the, the kind of thoughts that I had so and did, yeah. did therapy help one thousand that's my biggest regret I thought I could do it myself because I'm like this stubborn Scorpio and I was like yeah. I need therapy <laughs> and now I'm like oh my god how dumb like Therapy's I great. could have saved me and saved so much that went wrong you yeah know I, mean? I wish like, I did it sooner as well yeah so to anyone watching this who's maybe thinking or feeling like me and Sasha and if you think you can get out of it yourself you probably can but it's going to be so much harder yeah and I gen- I think therapy should be like a general checkup like for everyone 100%. I think it's so um what's what I want to use um I want to say important but it, I know yeah, it's not po- that. important meaningful like there's so much that I think people take from it but it's also seen as like oh if you've gone to therapy you kind of failed at something I'm like oh my god no, no. it's yeah it's definitely I think therapy is like just as important as like I don't know going, going and the, getting your blood yeah done like going to, to see if you're lacking vitamins yeah. like it's so important because I realized a lot about myself after going to therapy but th- before I had no idea. I had absolutely no idea. Like some of the things that I was thinking or some of the things that I'd been through, like just, you just think that they're normal. This is just how I, who I am or mm-hmm. this is just the way that I am. Mm-hmm. And then like a therapist would just tell you like, no. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like put the light bulb. And, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that makes sense. And then I you're think... able to actively like make changes. Put the which pieces is nice. together. Yeah. yeah. Sasha's no longer with Nala's dad Mm -hmm. do you feel like the breakdown of relationship had something to do with those first two years of struggle or do you think that was something completely separate because I know when people have a child Mm. um I'd actually love to know what the exact statistics are because I bet they're high so many relationships fail yeah which is such a shame right Mm. do you think that had anything to do with what you were going through I think so I think one thing I always used to say to myself is like, well, before I have a child, like I want to be healed. I want to be healthy. Like, I just want to be like a really whole person. And I thought that I was like, I thought like, I'm fine. Like I'm ready. Like there's nothing, you know, wrong, not wrong with me, but there's nothing that I feel like I need to heal from. Like, but I was just wrong. And it's like, I didn't realize until after I had Nala unfortunately you know loads of people always say like just don't have a child until you're healed because you don't want to pass anything on to them which is very real um and that's why I'm also glad that I I went to therapy when I did Mm -hmm. because I've had the chance to you know sort things out Mm -hmm. so anything that I experienced or anything that any bad habits or bad ways or just trauma that I was carrying is not going to get passed mm-hmm. on to Nala because I've dealt with it mm-hmm. um but the so, relationship didn't survive yeah that I would, comment, if that makes sense yeah I would say yeah th- that I just I don't know like looking back there's 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 a there's a lot of things but I think to navigate through a relationship like it takes a lot of work and I think you need a lot of support and if you don't have the tools to get through what it is that you're going through like I just think it's not really going to work and I can confidently say like I didn't have the tools to get through a complicated like stage of things you know what I mean you you worded that so well (laughs) and your relationship was in the public eye massively yeah Yeah. um did you feel a lot of pressure 
Um, do you know what? I would say yes and no. Yes, because naturally I'm quite an introverted, laid back. Before I was in that relationship, I would be that person that would just disappear for like months at a time because I would, I just couldn't be on social media for too long. Um, that, so that's naturally just like who I was mm-hmm. at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, so then obviously going into a relationship and you're in the public eye and then you have all these opinions, then you realize there's all these people that now like suddenly care about your relationship and people that secretly don't want it to work. And there's just so many things that come with it. Um, It was definitely difficult kind of dealing with everyone's opinions and everyone's voices and then, you know, trying to like listen to your own. Um, but one thing I will say about Nala's dad is he he always made me feel comfortable because I think being with a rapper, um, they kind of have like um stigma and a stigma that they're unfaithful yeah. and they do this and they're out every weekend and they're you know, but he was very respectful and um he definitely made it easier. He made being in the public eye easier mm-hmm. just from the way that he was. Mm-hmm. Um so that definitely helped. But I think for my own self, like just going from someone who just wasn't out there that much to then just being thrown in the deep yeah. end with it. Yeah. That was intense. And I remember like the first couple of like hateful messages I got, I was literally in bed crying my eyes out because I was just like, how are people this mean? Like what people kind of can be. What would they say? Um, what would they say? Uh, oh God. I don't even think I can really remember, but I remember one comment. So it was like common knowledge that like my mom had passed away. Okay. And there was just this comment. There was actually, there was this girl that used to harass everyone. Mm-hmm. So looking back, I don't even know why like, it gets, yeah. she used to harass like everyone. Yeah. <clears throat> She's actually disappeared off the map now, which is weird. Maybe she went to prison. But um, <laughs> she, she messaged me one time and she was just like, I hope you're... I hope your daughter dies like your mom and just saying wow. really yeah and I'm pregnant at this time as well wow. I'm just like why would you even say that yeah she's um, so um yeah people like that need she weren't normal yeah, yeah she wasn't normal but um, I'm so sorry you had to go through that oh no it's fine especially in a in a really vulnerable time when you are pregnant you are so vulnerable yeah no you are but yeah, like just random fake pages would just come along and just say something and it would just kind of like interrupt your day. And it's kind of it's one of those things where it's like, there's a lot more love than there is hate. But I think as human naturally, if someone just comes up to you and be like, I, mm-hmm. I think you're so ugly, I hate your eyes. And then 10 people can come and t- tell you that you're beautiful and they're, they you, love your eyes, but yeah. you're gonna remember that one person yeah, it's like that has, nature. yeah. And so I think dealing with that was just hard because it's like I never really had to deal with much criticism ever because in the normal world, people don't just come up to you and yeah. criticize you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Keep it to themselves. They do, or they go and tell their friend. Like you don't have to deal with that. I so. guess it's I guess it's all part of. Um, being in a public relationship with someone who is quite well. Yeah. How did you guys meet? Instagram. Okay, cool. Yeah. Did he slide in your DMs? Yeah, he did actually, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of the history, well, I don't like, I obviously have, uh, I just feel like because when you have the baby mm-hmm. and then the whole world gets thrown upside down, I can relate in so many ways, but and I know it's really difficult just yeah. how, how we've spoken earlier and mm-hmm. it's really tough and you have to battle things and go through things that you never wish you would go through and but you have the most beautiful daughter and I guess you just always lean on that for comfort yeah thank you I mean <laughs> I, I I don't I, I don't know how exactly how it feels but I can only mm. just imagine as I say and Nala came into yours lives for a reason, hey. Yeah. Definitely believe the universe put her there for a reason. Yeah. Um, so going on to co-parenting, because mm-hmm. um I put a question box on my Instagram story and a lot of people wrote in. I personally feel like co-parenting has this stigma, right? Yeah. It's like you guys failed, so now you're gonna have this really traumatic, like um experience of bringing up your child. And actually it's so normal. And I would say every other person with a child probably co-parents. 
And I think it can be a beautiful thing, mm-hmm. especially if two people re- have realized like me and you are no good for each other, but we're still going to do a really good job of this. And mm-hmm. I think that's a real special thing to do because you're putting your child yeah, first, which best. is of course the number one priority. So mm-hmm. what, how, how, how is co-parenting for you? Co-parenting. In a nutshell. <laughs> In a nutshell. It's been a journey. It's definitely been a journey. It's not, um, it's not been as straightforward as it may have looked. Um, and I just think, like you said, one thing that like we have had to do regardless of anything um, is just always focus on Nala and kind of like remove our own emotions away from the situation because we would go through periods where we would just, we'd be arguing all the time. like, And then we've got to like go into a meeting together and it's just like, hi, hi. Like, and you know, I think luckily me and him were quite both, we're like very, um, what's the, we don't hold on to things. Do you know what I mean? We kind of get over things like quite quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like that's helped, but um, yeah, I think just removing any emotions that you feel for each other um or any emotions that you have like I don't know surrounding like the past relationship or whatever and just focusing directly on your child in our case on Nala has just helped us to navigate um and get to where we are today and of course with me and him like we have a business together and it's like that must be that <laughs> must be hard. It's like you have almost two babies together because yeah. one is Nala and one is, one the, is business. the business. Yeah, and you almost it's have to very... treat business like a baby. You have to nurture it and love it. And... Exactly. <sighs> and I just think, yeah, it's just something that like we couldn't have. It's something that we couldn't have prepared for. When we broke up, we had the conversation. It was just kind of like, do we still want to do this together or is one of us going to do it? Should one of us step away? And we kind of just said no like we started this for Nala let's finish it for Nala kind of thing how soon after Nala's baby was born did you separate so we had the idea of starting it in 2020 before Nala was born probably a year so we hadn't actually launched it or anything okay. it was still like just in the yeah. background yeah it was kind of like working on it developing it so I'd say like a year into that okay um but at, by this point, we'd both invested like a lot of money into it and stuff as well. So it was just like another investment that we'd both made. And it was just like, okay, well, we think still doing it together is going to be the best thing. Um, and that's been, it's been tough as well. That's been hard because I think for the most part, if you break up with someone, usually people break up businesses and stuff as well don't they they don't yeah usually. and it's not normal really when you break it's up with someone to be talking to every day about business so yeah it's it's it, I don't know but I can assume it must be hard to try and detach when you know you're still talking every day and seeing this person so often normally when you break up you don't normally see the person yeah and you don't normally talk to them yeah um so I can imagine that was really really difficult yeah I'd say at the beginning yeah Definitely. When a bit um, it just, sore. Yeah, it just kind of like makes everything a lot more complicated, a lot more difficult because it's like you don't have that space where you can separate. I think usually when you break up with someone, you kind of go cold turkey and then mm-hmm. it's just, but you can't do that with a child and a business. So nope. um, it definitely made things more difficult for, a, for probably for a long while. And then... I mean, over the years now, because we've been separated a few years, it's it's just, it's got a lot easier to navigate. Mm -hmm. And um, I think when the the lines stopped kind of being blurry, that just made things a lot easier as well to kind of just navigate. Yeah, and to just focus like directly on the business and on that. And very more, it's much more black and white. Yeah. The emotion exactly. starts to like weave out. Yeah. And um, one thing that people wrote in about was um, your faith mm-hmm. and your um, Nala's dad's faith. Mm-hmm. They're different. Yeah. Um, for those who may not know, Nala's dad is Muslim mm-hmm. and you are Christian. Yeah. Talk to us about that. That uh, is it difficult? Because um, um, what 
Do, what's Nala raised as? So Nala's uh, technically, if we're technically speaking, in her dad's eyes, some Muslims believe that when they have a child, that that child is born Muslim. Mm-hmm. Um, so he would probably consider her Muslim. Um, we haven't really had that conversation. Um, and for me, I wouldn't say or force on her that she's a Christian out of respect for her dad. However, she does come to church with me. And when we pray, she prays to Jesus. Like, you know, so we definitely keep things like separate. But um, we're just respectful of each other's beliefs. Um, if Cass wants her to partake in like... Um, Ramadan and stuff like that like the celebration of it I'm not going to tell him that he can't Mm -hmm. and when Nala wants to come to church or do certain things he also don't you know he don't tell her no or tell her that she can't. So it works quite well then? It works quite well for now yeah. Um, And the older Nala gets I mean it's hard to talk so much in the future but Mm -hmm. I don't know if you think about like the older Nala gets will she just Will you just give her the autonomy to choose what she feels right for her rather than like... I think for me, um, I don't think any, I don't think having faith in God is ever worked when it's kind of forced onto someone anyway, because you have to have a relationship for yourself. Mm -hmm. So I would never force anything on her. Um, A big part of my religion is faith and it's just having faith that, you know, God will come through and Mm -hmm. just... Mm-hmm. she'll just she'll just know um jesus for herself but that might not be the case and if it's not the case then i would just support her in you know whatever it is whatever life journey she goes on goes mom on. will be right next to her yeah and do you go to church every week yeah so your you would say your faith is really strong yeah i'm definitely practicing i'd say are you is that what we call it practicing christian yeah is it practicing <laughs> And are you, is this a recent thing or have you always? No, it's definitely not recent. So I've always, um, I've always believed in God. Um, growing up, I would go to church. I went to a Christian primary school. Um, but it was never like a family thing. I th- my mom and dad were Catholic, actually. I think both of them were Catholics. Um, have you lost both your parents? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but they never, they weren't religious or anything like that they were quite the opposite (laughs) um but just in my area the local things to do were go to church on a sunday Mm -hmm. go to something called friday club which was run by like two christians a husband Mm -hmm. and a wife um and then my primary school was just like heavily christian um so i always had like that influence growing up then i became a teenager and then i told myself that i was an atheist and then, and I was just like, no, there's no God. I don't believe in God, oh. whatever. Um, and then I'd say throughout my twenties, slowly the relationship of kind of like weaving in and out, a few things would happen. Um, that kind of just made me realize, no, like God is real. And uh, so you've had experiences, like personally, as to like, well, there's got to be something, yeah, bigger than this. Yeah, That's definitely, definitely. Um, and then last year, not last year, 2022, um, it's called getting saved. I would say I got saved and that's when I started to take my relationship with God seriously. So I invested like actual time into building a relationship in getting to know God and like spending time going to church and just again just being intentional about the things that I'm doing the things that I'm learning and stuff and yeah it's kind of just been from there really That's it's really kind of been a bit of a, a roller coaster, part of your life it's now part of it. yeah yeah definitely love that and just touching on co-parenting slightly before we move on a lot of people wrote in um because co-parenting is so normal and so many people go through it so let's normalize it a little bit more um and said we really struggle. There was a very common theme. We really struggle when um, the parent, one of the parents has a new partner mm-hmm. and the child or children are introduced to another man or woman, mm-hmm. which I can totally understand. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any of those emotions like Nala potentially having another woman slash mother figure in her life based on his choices? And does that bring out certain feelings in you? If that makes any sense of how I've worded that. 
I'm gonna say no because um Cassie's he's quite a sensible person like I know that he wouldn't just have anyone unless he trusts them unless he knows that they're gonna be a good example to Nala unless you know it makes sense for him and Nala's life I, I know he wouldn't just be introducing just anyone to her so I feel like that's something that I'm just I don't even think about because that's I, really I wouldn't nice even though. like I wouldn't worry about it I just I trust that whoever he brings around Nala is gonna be a good he's one. making a good decision yeah. so yeah. um yeah I just I just try not to think about that I think it can be just unnecessary stress but again it just it does depend on who the mother or the father of your child is because yeah if you kind of have like a crazy baby father or crazy that would be really, <laughs> that would be really tough it's going to be difficult because because you're trying to protect someone that you can't really protect because you're not there you don't have that control yeah i so. do i do feel like with co-parenting so a lot of people wrote in and they were like you have to let go of control you do because you just cannot you just control it yeah. so stop even trying because it's so mentally exhausting once they go they are out of your hands That's and it. you just have to hope, pray and have faith in the fact that they're good. Yeah. And I think I can really understand that. Mm -hmm. um, that's literally like nail on the head, literally. Yeah, that's, I just can imagine. That's that. it. I think you, when you try and ha hold on to that control still, that's where it's just like the emotions and stuff, everything's just delayed because, and that's when people get bitter. And yeah. It's, it's, just, it's, it's just not worth it. It's just like, just let go and just try you know if you are concerned about it just try and have as much of a grown-up conversation yeah. about it without it being you know coming from a bitter place and yeah. you're trying to control anything yeah. just just be honest about how you feel and what you want and you know sometimes you do have to look at yourself and think okay what I'm expecting right now is actually I'm I'm probably expecting a little bit too much because I think some people would be like, no, you're not allowed to introduce someone to my kid until you've been dating for 10 years. And it's just like, <laughs> it's just like, be real, you know? Yeah. So I think from the stance of people writing in saying, I'm struggling to meet someone new. Yeah. Um, I'm really struggling to let go of the person I thought I was going to be and the person I thought I was going to be with. And I'm really struggling to let go of that family picture. And I can understand that. So touching on the business, Nala's yeah. Baby, which is so exciting um, and is super popular. You're in like all, if not most, mainstream Tesco boots. Morrison's. Morrison's. Ocado now. Oh, cool. Order yeah. online. Yeah. Love that. So talk to us about like the idea, where it was born, kind of what the mission is with Nala's Baby now. Mm -hmm. um, Nala has eczema mm -hmm. um, still to this current day, mm -hmm. right? Did she have a period where she suffered really badly? What was kind of the journey with Nana's eczema? Because my baby also had eczema, so I know how that feels. It's yeah. really difficult. Um, so Nala's eczema kind of started like really late. So it started when she was like one and a half. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, just out of nowhere. Um, really? You don't know what the trigger was? Just completely out of nowhere. When we got her allergy tested, when we got the results back, they made it seem as though she was allergic to everything. Okay. So like fish, beef, wheat, oats, gluten. <laughs> so we cut absolutely everything out of her diet. We spent money with a nutritionist, like trying to tailor um, a diet plan and everything for her. And... It just didn't work. So we no. were doing that for months. Nursery were in on it. Everyone was in on it. When she went to her nans, like everything was just very strict. Like she couldn't eat anything, but her skin just seemed to be getting worse, not better. And was just like, okay, this is weird. Um, so then after a while, I say after probably, it might have been even coming up to a year. Mm -hmm. I've gone back and I've looked at the results of like the allergy test for myself. And I'm going through... And on the sheet, it says like 0.02% allergic, 0.01, 0.03, but it's out of 10. Mm -hmm. So I'm like 0.02% allergic out of 10 is Isn't not allergic. Yeah. Like that's literally not an allergy. 
So I phoned them and I was explaining the results and the lady was like, yeah, no, that's not an allergy. That sounds like because she has eczema, if you give her these foods that are known to cause allergies, she could and have some trigger. sensitivity mm-hmm. and it could, you know, make her eczema worse mm-hmm. or something like that. So I was just like, what? So after we spent all this money, you guys telling us that we need to do this, do that, do that. You're now telling me that she's not allergic. So that was really frustrating because we thought that we'd found, like gotten to the bottom of it. Started to just introduce more normal food to her again. Um, Still didn't get better. And to be honest, I'd say it only just started to get better. So when we moved back to Birmingham, yeah, which is really weird. Oh, so, okay. And anytime she goes back to London now for like up. longer than two days, she comes back covered, flared up and she itches. Heartbreak. But then she'll be here for like, I'd say by day five, it's all gone back down mm-hmm. and she's just, her skin's back to normal. So... I still don't know what it is exactly that's causing it, but I do know that London's making it worse. So exactly. being here has actually really helped because her skin was so bad, like that's so bad. so so bad. And does um do you use Nala's baby on her? Yeah. And does it? Yeah, it's actually the only thing that works on her. So when we when we um first started to create Nala's baby and we was getting the samples, she had like little patches of like eczema in the creases of her elbows and the back of her legs. And when we would use that on her, it would calm it down. Mm-hmm. But we couldn't get loads of samples because at this point we hadn't made an order for like for them to um, stem them. So when we'd run out of the samples, we'd notice that her eczema would get bad again. But then it got so bad that we couldn't even use Nala's baby because mm-hmm. she was scratching and her skin was cracked and sore and mm. everything that you put on them just kind of like irritates. Um, but yeah, when I say I've tr- I tried every, every single thing that I could possibly try um and just nothing worked for Nala like absolutely nothing it's really heartbreaking isn't it it's the hardest thing like the lack of sleep that you get the lack of sleep that they get so going on holiday in there oh it's awful man. it's soul destroying I say it to everyone like I never realized what it actually took to get through that year because of the eczema and allergies like so hard uh, the sleep deprivation oh but as i as i say it's not only just for me yeah and Seth, for example it's for ziggy yeah like it's for them sleep How is the biggest healer feeling. but they're not they sleeping because sleep. they're itching, so the skin's not healing it's like yeah. this vigorous cycle and it is soul destroying it's awful so i'm so glad to hear that she's doing better now yeah. And what would you say, like, from a business perspective, the mission is for Nala's baby? Is it just to do more of what you're doing? Or is there a plan, different things to come? Um, So the kind of, like, guideline that we wanted to always adhere to from the be- very beginning was we just want to create products that um, are clean, affordable, um, and just available to most people because the equivalent to our products they do exist it's not that they're out not out there and it's not that there's no clean products out there but they're just really expensive and yeah people just can't afford um to have them um so it's to maintain that throughout and for it not to just be one or two products but for it to just be the entire range um and so like the whole brand that's just the ethos of the brand basically just getting that out there just clean um natural products but to also expand further so we're currently um trying to branch off and see where we want to next take it whether that's like um, is it international not yet so we wanted to kind of like master the uk and get our internals just together and organized Mm -hmm. here Mm -hmm. And just build as big as we can here so that when it is time to go international, we're like a, a recognised. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're recognised and it just makes it a lot easier than just to mm-hmm. rush to America or Europe. And we have had those offers, but right now it just doesn't make sense. the most sense. So I just want to touch on, um, <laughs> people were interesting how you're interested to know how your like days are set up. Yeah. Because obviously um, we know you have done influencing and like content creation, but now you've got Nala's baby and that's mm. uh, a really important business to you. And you've got Nala. So give us like a typical day, what it might look like with regards to like what the split slash setup is. And I know every day is different. 
Okay, it's so different. Yeah. It's Can so you give hard. Us, like a general gist as to what that looks like? Okay, so for me, it, it's like my periods of like being busy, it's like I'll go two weeks and all I've really got to do in those two weeks is like a few Zoom calls. Thank God for Zoom as well. <laughs> <laughs> the physical meetings, I don't have to do them out much. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I'll have like two weeks where I don't really have to do much intense work when it comes to Nala's and stuff. It would just be a Zoom or a meeting here and there. Um, and then I don't have much content that I need to do. So then in those time, in that time, I can just focus on like errands and doing things with Nala and catching up on the things that I've let get behind and stuff. And then <laughs> the, two weeks later, I will arrive and it's like back to back. Non-stop. And I have to, um, I'm having to drive to London, stay there for like three days. I have meetings, I have events, I have this, I have that. And it just kind of changes um, so it's hard to say like what a typical day looks like at home. Um, I would say drop Nala to nursery, come back. There's usually some kind of Zoom in the week that I have to do that lasts about two hours. So that's quite a big chunk. By the time I've dropped Nala to nursery, done that Zoom, big chunk of my day. It's like one o'clock, two o'clock. And I'm like, how? Then I've got to make dinner. And then I've got to try and find the the time to go to the gym or do some kind of like physical activity. And then there's like laundry that needs to be doing. And then there's like the house needs to be clean. Like there's just so much. The laundry, endless. Endless, I'm like how? It's it's me and a small child in the house. Why is there so much laundry? Um, So yeah, it just depends. And like when it's really busy, I won't do housework or cook for like a week. So, so like it's just it's on catch up. Yeah, yeah, it's it. The balance is just there's not really a balance. No, I, I think, think it's kind of impossible to like balance. Like you can balance, you can try and balance like as best as you can, mm-hmm. but a balance, I don't think it really exists. No, and I think you learn that so much more when you have a child. Like yeah. again, it's like trying to control the uncontrollable. Like sometimes you just got to go with it. Yeah. But do you find yourself getting like I don't know if it's just me. I'd, I don't like to use this word because it's actually very serious. So I'm not mm. going to use it. But I get like stressed when the house isn't in order. Oh my God. And then I like yes. let it frustrate me. And then no, I like. it's a real thing. Want to bite someone's head off. Yeah. And that's half the problem. Yeah. Like the, no. the laundry <laughs> basket's full. Like get over it, Lucy. But I'm yeah. like, you want everything to be. To be. Balanced. It's yeah. so hard. But it's like a clean space clear mind nice. like oh it's just goodness. so real yeah like, there's nothing better than a tidy house in my opinion there's nothing like it and do you it's have um lots of support from your family now you're back home i wouldn't say lots of support because um <laughs> a big chunk of my family live in telford which is like bit, like further north. <laughs> yeah it's is like it no- far it's north of Birmingham. Not even like towards towards Manchester. I don't even know if that's north or south it's north not. is it not it's north yeah so up that way um And then, yeah, some of them do live here. Um, So I definitely do get a lot more help. Like if I need someone to just pick up Nala or take her to gymnastics or do do this. Yeah, bless her. Yeah. Um, There's always just like, everyone's just a phone call away. Mm -hmm. So that really helps. I don't have to be so stressed out. Like, oh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Um, Do you have siblings? I have loads of siblings. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like a weird one because they're all a lot older. Okay. So growing up, I always felt like the only child. Mm -hmm. Um, And then now, not everyone lives, you know, like too close. Everyone's kind of like dotted around. One of my closest sisters to me lives in America. Oh, that's helpful, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) So helpful. Um, So yeah, it's, I have a lot of siblings, but everyone's just kind of like scattered, doing life. Scattered, yeah, yeah. Love that. Yeah, a few people actually wrote in about your YouTube and said, "Why are you not doing it anymore?" Oh, did they? Do you yeah, want- loads of people actually always say, "Are you ever going to go back to YouTube?" And I'm just like, I need some more hours in the day. And is that why probably- you're not? Is that why you don't do it because it's just a struggle with time? Yeah, and then it's just like I don't want to do it if I'm not going to be committed. So I don't want to do that is? video. I don't think people know what goes into content creation. Yeah. It so takes much. so much time, 
yes. um, energy yeah. in, in every way, especially if you want to put out content that is quality. It's not a rush job. It's not something that you can just quickly do. It takes planning, execution, edit. Yeah, up, up. exactly. And when you don't have the time to do it, it's really, really difficult. It's frustrating. And that's yeah. probably why we don't see you so much on there. Literally. If you had all the time in the world, I'm sure we'd get. I would do it. I mean, I went to, okay. So I did, I went to Jamaica in September for my sister's wedding and I was like, you know what? I'm going to vlog this. It's going to be time to go back into YouTube. I got there by day three. Do you think I'd even picked up my camera oh, again? Right. So it's even that. It's just like remembering when I've... It's, it's just hard. I just think it's hard. And I think with a child as well, I have baby brain. Like baby yeah. brain still exists. Yeah. Even at three. And it's like pick up my camera or fill up my bag with everything that Nala needs for the day. And There's no like, question of what you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Left, you know what I mean? So you just end up like missing things I just think oh it, it's it's just again you have to be very intentional about it and it's just like I have to pick and choose what I'm and you know what when because... when the universe is um when you're meant to have that intention and time for it you'll do it yeah it's just right now probably isn't the known priority the best time, yeah. but we hope you come back soon because um your content content is so good I love it I was looking back just through your Instagram pictures um last night and I was like I love these yeah. like take such good content but all in the right timing mom is always a priority and I totally get it because even when I had Ziggy I was like nope yeah it's so hard and then it, and then it becomes an even bigger torment when it's your job and you're like but I have to do this oh my God, yeah so difficult yeah but yeah I am so thankful you've come today I oh, think you're you. amazing I just said off camera that Sasha is so good in front of the camera and you smashed this podcast and I can't wait to get it out. I know you'll all be so excited to see and hear from Sasha and thank you for touching on things that I know are very um, special and private. And mm -hmm. I think you will be able to help a lot of people just by talking about it. And I think that's what I try to do with this podcast. So if you've made it this far, then thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe whatever you can do to support the cause. Thank you, Sasha, for being here. Thank you, Thank you so for coming. Much. I know you're so busy and I appreciate it so much. Um, so yeah, thank you. And we'll be back soon. Well, next week with another video. Ciao.